One to watch tonight. How well do you know your planet? Join Philip and Anne for Test the Nation at 8 here on BBC One. They've come so far, but with £50,000 and a dance contract at stake, only one of our three remaining couples can win. Darian and Holly. Ben and Stephanie. Darren and Lana. Join me for the final. Strictly Dance Fever, the final, Saturday at 6 on BBC One. Exploring the contribution Christian thinking can make to the debate about the environment, Songs of Praise joins the climate chaos season in 15 minutes here on BBC One, right after Points of View. Hello there, good afternoon and welcome to Points of View. All looks rather grand and exclusive, just like the glorious surroundings of BBC Two's new drama, Line of Beauty. Now, if you've been watching it, you will know that it's not the interior design on the programme that's been provoking the criticism, though. Line of Beauty exceeded the bounds of decency. Good drama does not need this glaring and disturbing explicitness. I pay my licence fee, but do not expect the BBC to broadcast such sickening images. It was faithful to the book almost to the letter, superbly enacted and very good to look at. For those of you who missed it, Line of Beauty is the dramatisation of Alan Hollinghurst's prize-winning novel. Set in the upper echelons of 1980s Thatcherite society, it follows the drug use and homosexual love affairs of an Oxford graduate. I mean, what went wrong there, Nick? We're going to get married and everything. I think eventually you'll come to see it as a fortunate escape. Yeah? Hmm. I suppose so. I'm working on it. Anyway, what about you? Are you seeing anyone at the moment? No. Not really. The content of some scenes so soon after the nine o'clock watershed clearly upset some viewers, but producer Kate Lewis defends the decision to remain true to the original novel. It wasn't our intention to offend people. Um, I'm aware that this is a show that's not to everyone's taste. It's not a novel that was to everyone's taste, but I think that there's a very solid argument for making this adaptation. Um, it's a landmark contemporary novel. Um, by a writer who's considered to be, who's widely considered to be one of our greatest living writers. And I think we have a duty to uh, be faithful to his original work. And staying with drama, the domestic lives of those from the opposite end of the social spectrum has been causing a stir amongst viewers of the street. The final episode of this Jimmy McGovern working class drama concerned a woman subjected to domestic violence. The portrayal of her abuse provoked a strong reaction. The violence, vile language and appalling behaviour that is portrayed as family life makes me wonder what on earth possesses anyone, let alone a public corporation, to beam this into our homes. Well, we've had dozens of emails, letters and phone calls in a similar vein, but many, many more reacting to exactly the same episode in this way. I've been moaning to anyone who will listen about paying for the BBC, but then you come up with something like The Street. This series, I have to say, will justify any money I pay to the BBC many times over. Thank you very much. This drama series has been amazing. Each week I've been glued to my seat and been in tears on several occasions. To say it was heart-wrenching is an understatement. Well done to the BBC and all of the actors. So here's a short taster to judge for yourself. If I'd known you were coming back, I'd have tidied up a bit. I'm coming back to stay. Good. On my own with the kids. No, no. If you come back here, we'll live together. I'm filing for a divorce, Sean. Are you all right, yeah? Huh? On what grounds? Sure. Because we fight. Every couple fights! You're fighting it, it's abuse! What did you say? Well, that was the last in the current series of The Street, but it has been recommissioned, so filming will resume shortly. But there's no word yet on when the new series will actually be screened. 
Now, several viewers of the street also raised a query that we've been getting more and more correspondence about, and that's BBC Action Lines. The street looked at the issue of domestic violence in graphic and distressing scenes, but there was no helpline number for people to call who might have been affected by the issues raised in the film. So there are requests for a helpline to be offered after certain programmes. But in recent weeks, uh, we've also received criticism that when its services are on offer, the BBC Action Line doesn't deliver what viewers expected. I am annoyed that the BBC Action Line was described as an advice line. After calling the number, I realised it was not able to give advice, as the person who answered was not medically trained. Right, let's take this straight to the top and ask the BBC's Head of Audience Services, Steve Pollock, what exactly the Action Line can do and who decides which programmes actually get its support. The decision about which programmes get supported is made jointly between the producers and a team of people who work in my area. Uh, and in terms of the services that um, the audience can expect, uh, it is mainly a referral service so that uh, when they contact us, they will be given the opportunity to contact other organisations who can give them more specific advice and help. And we've been providing this service for over 11 years now, and over that period of time, we've dealt with over 4,000 different subjects and themes. The definitive answer. The BBC's action line then can only put viewers in touch with other organisations who can help. They are not a counselling service themselves. Now, whether you're a plant lover or not, if you've been tuned to BBC TV this week, you cannot fail to have noticed that it's been the Chelsea Flower Show. And our mailbag has been not so much about the quality of the coverage that the event has given as the sheer quantity. This week, some eight hours coverage of the Chelsea Flower Show has been broadcast. Many items were repeated each evening. It's too much. A half-hour show at half twelve on BBC One, an hour at 7pm on BBC One, and then straight over to BBC Two for another hour. That's two and a half hours in one day. A bit excessive, don't you think? I enjoy watching parts of it, but I'm not sure why the BBC seems to think it needs to be covered as if it were a sport. I'm just not interested, and I find the BBC coverage excessive and annoying. It seems that they have felt the need to turn it into something similar to a sporting event. OK, OK, I get the message. Gardening, getting as much coverage as football, and in the run-up to the World Cup, surely that can't be true. Over the moon and the boy done good. Runners up medal, sponsorship. Oh! Looks pretty reminiscent of the World Cup to me, except of course that the Chelsea Flower Show was only on for one week, whereas the build up to the World Cup began, oh, at least a month ago and will carry on until July. I think football's still got the edge, don't you? But sport is obviously where it's at. Even so, David Attenborough has adopted sports coverage tactics for his latest natural history offering. This is our planet, planet Earth. The BBC has launched a series of programmes under the banner of a climate chaos season. Its aim? To draw attention to the global warming crisis affecting the planet. I find it sobering to think that while I've been travelling the world trying to record the complexity and beauty of our planet, that I too have been making my own contribution to global warming. The coverage has provoked heated debate, which is precisely what its makers wanted. I just wanted to comment on this wonderful and thought-provoking series by David Attenborough. I watched the first episode and was astounded at the range of research and the brilliance of filming undertaken. More programmes like this, please. What a terrible piece of sensationalist journalism this programme was. I watched it to find out man's impact on global warming, which is undoubtedly happening and the best it could come up with was the predictions of a supercomputer. I think this series could make the small but yet fundamental shift in public opinion that could see us as a society acknowledge and deal with the environmental challenges that are confronting us. Sir David Attenborough, who's fronting the season across BBC output, says it's an issue of such importance that any tactics even mirroring those used to galvanise a nation's sporting pride, should be employed to raise awareness. 
suddenly uh, we will be doing the Olympics and suddenly all the networks will be covered with the Olympic Games. Yeah, and that's quite right and proper because that's what's uh, occupying the thoughts of a great proportion of the human race. Um, but climate change ought to be doing exactly the same thing. Uh, so um, I, I think it's not unreasonable or unprecedented that, uh, that, that the network should really deal with it in a wholesale way. Sir David Attenborough there hoping his latest natural history series will lead to positive change to protect the earth. Now there have been changes afoot at Heaven and Earth, the Heaven and Earth show that is. It would appear there's been a new set and presenter and the changes have not gone unnoticed. What have the BBC done with the format of the Heaven and Earth show? It's gone from a young, vibrant atmosphere with interesting guests into a middle-of-the-road hour of prosaic chat with Gloria Honeyford. I was dismayed to see that not only has the Heaven and Earth show received a makeover with a new set and a new presenter, but it now appears to have a new agenda. I will no longer be watching the Heaven and Earth show from this day forth. In fact, today, after the opening credits, I turn to another channel in disgust. So, it sounds as if Heaven and Earth has undergone a bit of a makeover, which begs the question, why? The hour-long Sunday morning magazine program is made by the BBC's Religion and Ethics Department in Manchester and used to look like this. Hello. Morning, how are you? Now, this week, more pictures emerged, apparently showing Western troops abusing Iraqi prisoners and even children. It's now fronted by Gloria Honeyford and looks more like this. And a very warm welcome to the programme. I just say I'm really looking forward to being here each Sunday and obviously I'm hoping you're going to be there as well. The change isn't just the result of overzealous spring cleaning but a complete house move. Well, we have a new set because we've moved studios. We'd worn out our old studios at the BBC, so we've now moved to Granada, where we transmit from every Sunday. And that's given us a much bigger studio, so much more space to have live music, for example, and more guests. And along with that, we had to obviously have a new set, and we took that opportunity to have new music, new titles, and also a new presenter in Gloria, who I think for us became something along the lines of the face of heaven and earth. She's someone who's very interested in religion and in issues around belief. And I hope that in Gloria, people will see perhaps the face of heaven and earth and will get a, a stronger image of what the program's about. The content isn't changing. Uh, we're still going to be dealing with the big questions of life, those big issues that everybody grapples with, whether they're religious or non-religious. And uh, you can be assured that whatever changes to the set or the music, the point of the program is still going to be the same as it's always been. So whether they're welcome or not, at least we know the reason for the changes at the Heaven and Earth show. Another brand that's been refreshed to overwhelmingly positive effect is the BBC Young Musician of the Year competition. For almost 30 years, the nation's brightest and best young musicians have competed for the prestigious title, which, in recent years, has all but guaranteed a successful recording career. The coverage used to be somewhat staid. Your teacher, Florence Hooten, is here. She teaches yes, you up in London at the Royal Academy. What tip did she give you this afternoon before she you went said, on? enjoy yourself. Enjoy That's yourself? What she always says, yes. Well, the best of luck, Caroline, with your career. Oh, well, I would say that it's an astonishing performance. Outstanding technical accomplishment, first-class teaching, beautiful position, lovely tone. But this year's final, which preceded good old Terry and his Eurovision coverage last Saturday night, was roundly praised. The superb talent of the young, disciplined and very hard-working musicians is unbelievable. It was the perfect antidote to the other reality shows around at the minute. It was very well done and was the BBC at its best. So here, as requested, is Mark Simpson and his winning performance as BBC Young Musician of the Year. The aforementioned Sir Terry, back in charge next week, so keep your emails, letters and phone calls coming in. The contacts on the screen as we hear 17-year-old Mark with Carl Nielsen's clarinet concerto. Bye-bye. <laughs> of the